when you're first getting started with Tiller, you'll notice that we pull in about 90 days worth of data. And if you're trying to file your taxes for all of last year, you may need to manually add some data to your Tiller um, transaction sheet. So if I open up this 2018 business taxes demo sheet that I've pulled in here um, for an account that I've recently set up, you'll notice that I only have transactions going back to November of 2018. So I'm going to need to pull the uh, rest of my 2018 data from my bank directly, either in a CSV format, which a lot of banks support downloading a comma delimited file, which is a CSV, uh, or you can a lot of times just copy and paste the data table directly from the transactions page from your bank. And so I'm not going to demo those steps. I've already pulled the CSV for my 2018 data for the account that is here in the demo um, sheet. And so the first step to getting your data ready to put into the transaction sheet is to do a little bit of cleanup in that CSV. So I have the CSV stored here on my computer. I'm just gonna drag it into my Google Drive here at drive.google.com. Once it's uploaded, I can click on it to open it in Google Sheets here at the top. And then essentially I just need to prepare the data in this CSV to match the column order of the transaction sheet in my Tiller spreadsheet. The first thing I'm going to do though is just figure out if there's an overlap in the data set. So it looks like the last transaction or the earliest transaction Tiller pulled for this account was on 11.1 from Ampersand Cafe in Seattle for 9.56. So then if I look at my CSV download, I can just double check. So it looks like it did pull this one as well as the other one here for 8.61. So what I'm gonna do is just clear out those transactions because I don't want um, to have any duplicates or overlap. So it looks like it started at the beginning of November. So I'll just go ahead and delete those rows two through four. So now I don't have to worry about overlap or checking in on what I need to copy over later. I know that this is the full data set that I need. So the next thing I like to do is just to create a kind of prep sheet here by clicking the plus sign in the lower left and then copy in the header row from my transaction sheet. So I'll go ahead and choose copy and then I'll go ahead and paste special values only. So this is just gonna help me um, make sure that I'm ordering my data correctly. So next I'll just pull over the data that I need for each of the columns based on that uh, prep sheet. So I'll go ahead and paste and then I need the descriptions. So control C is a shortcut to just copy. Control V is a shortcut to paste. I don't need this column or this column, but I do need the amount column. So I'll go ahead and pull that over into the prep sheet. Control C to copy, find amount, control V to paste. Now I like to see the full thing here and know what I'm doing. So don't, I'm not worried about category yet. I'm also not going to worry about account, account number, ins, or institution, but I am going to go ahead and fill in the month data. So I have this help article open here in my browser. You can find it by searching for how to manually add month data on our help center. I'm just going to copy this array formula, and this is just going to auto-populate the month data for me so that I don't have to worry about um, manually filling that in. So I paste that into row one here. And then I just need to change the format of this to be a date. And then it's giving me the months, but it's giving me the wrong year because the formula is thinking that my date column is in column A. So just be sure to double check that. It's different in some of our transaction sheets. So just double check. So I'll change these all to B because my date data is in column B. And then now I have my month data. So that is getting the data prepared. Now, when I want to get it into Tiller, I'll just need to copy this, the data set here as it appears. I'm just gonna start with the row numbers actually. So this makes sure I get all the data for all the transactions. I'll choose copy and then best practice is to just um, do a paste special Paste values only. I'm pasting this into my transaction sheet at the bottom of the list. When I do that, you can see that I get everything in the nice same formatting as it appears in the sheet when I do that values only. 
and I get my month data in there correctly. Now the last thing I need to do to just kind of clean all this up, since this is all the same account, it's really easy. I can just select this last line here and use this little blue square in the bottom right, which we call the quick fill square, and then drag it down and it just drags down all the data. And then I do see an error here. It's, it's wanting to um, increment my account number so I can just copy. I'll hold down shift to select all these and then I'll just paste and it corrects that account number. So just look for little things like that to make sure that uh, you get everything in there correctly. So looks like I have all my data cleaned up there. I'm not gonna have the transaction ID, full description or any of that for these manually added transactions, but it is important that we have the month. That's useful for some steps later. Um, the week date, I believe there's a help article on that, but I'm not gonna demo that in this. So now I have all my data prepared. So that's great. I've got my historical 2018 data. Now I'm ready to start doing the analysis, but how do I do that without having any of this categorized? The categorization piece is really important for your tax reporting because based on the categories that you're using, you might be able to itemize some things or if you're a freelance consultant or a small business, the, um, the categories are what kind of helps you determine what expenses you can write off uh, for your business um, to help with your, your tax situation. And we're not providing any specific advice on which categories are tax deductible or should be counted as business ex expenses, but that's something you can talk to a tax professional about. We're just demoing how the tool can help you organize the data. 